Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick top 10 things I found wrong in this user interface video. We'll try to make this quick, just because there is so much more wrong, but I just thought it'd be fun to do something quick. First thing, and we'll do it in uh, chronological order. First thing is, Tommy introduces himself as the CCO, the Chief Creative Officer slash President. I thought he was the CEO. Either way, he's not very creative, so I thought that was wrong. Second thing, when they do show the menu here, uh, the representation of the games being a planet, being a globe, and then using a 2D picture wrapped around a globe just looks terrible. Like you, you can barely tell that this game is called like what the games are. You see Shark Shark is just a jumbled mess. And the text is really small and it's hard to read. I don't understand why they wouldn't have used just a simple logo of the game or even like an animated GIF of part of the game just to show what it is with larger text below of it. This, I would find this, this will be pretty hard for, you know, older people to see because it's just so small. Just think this looks, just looks bad. So that goes into the third thing I found wrong is they have way too much wasted space on the main menu here. As you can see, first of all, the background is really a, like a low res space type picture. I don't know. They should have made it something a little bit more sharper. And instead of using all that empty space or wasting all that empty space, why didn't they make the games bigger and easier to see with the text easier to see? It just seems like that was like just a lot of dead space there and it's hard to see. It's the fourth thing on the list I found wrong is the uh, the text on the menus isn't uh, isn't justified correctly. It just seems weird. Like if you look in action, you see the two letters are really close together, and it, I, I'm not sure if the word is spacing. I, I, I'm not too sure, but it just doesn't look uniform and symmetrical. Like it just seems really similar to their physical box games. Things just don't look justified correctly, and as you can see. One of the menus is slanted up to lower right, and the other one's going from down the left to the up and right. It just doesn't seem consistent. It's very bizarre. Number five on this list is when they enter into the game here, it says it's one to four players, yet the logo below just shows three controllers. You know, it's not a big issue, but you'd think they would have four controllers showing. It's kind of, kind of, uh, kind of weird. Number six. If you go through the store or stop where it says store, it shows, first of all, the games aren't in alphabetical order, so it's kind of weird. I don't know how they have it set up, but you see armor battle. So I guess it's no longer battle tanks or tank battle, it's armor battle. You also see back talk party, which is supposed to be the six packing game. That's another weird thing. Why is the packing games like back talk party, skiing, Astro Smash, why are those games included in the store? They shouldn't be on the store. Other games we see here is Night Stalker, which we haven't seen at all. Nitro Derby, who knows? Major League Baseball, we haven't seen anything. And they actually have the Hot Wheels Colossal Crash. And that, do they have the license for that? I don't know. I guess they do. They wouldn't put in an official video saying Hot Wheels Colossal Crash if they did not have the license. Other games they have are like Blank Slate, Pool, Breakout, which they haven't shown in a while. I don't know why. It's their nicest looking game and a bunch of the Sesame Street games. And that's about it. For number seven, uh, this is one of my biggest gripes on the main menu. It shows all the games that you can play even if you don't own them. So the games you own are lit up or highlighted while the games you do not own are, um, not sure if the word's faded or ghost-like as Tommy would say, but that's extremely confusing, especially for a casual gamer. Cause if you look at it, you think, well, you just own everything and you don't so it kind of clutters it up and confuses people so especially for a kid you know he's talking about toddlers playing this and if you go over it you you, you would think if you see it that you own it so number eight on my list of things that were incorrect is the the settings menu just was just weird so you see they have eight options there and the first one is system and in my opinion you would think that language lights internet that type of stuff would be a sub menu of system. And if you look, you see in the bottom right it says info box. What does that mean? Like, I don't think anyone would understand what that means. If you slow down the, the video and when you highlights info box, it shows that there's messages. So I assume it's supposed to be an inbox. So it's weird that he wouldn't refer to it as inbox. Another weird thing I found about the settings menu here is the power is where you turn off, restart, or put your Amico to sleep. 
It's kind of weird that you have to go through a settings menu just to turn off the machine or put it into sleep mode. Usually on the, there's something on the main screen or else on the controller itself that would, if you hold the button, that it'll put into that menu. It just seems odd. And when he goes into the language menu, that's so cheesy. So the second option for languages after English is Italiano, and he makes a joke about it. Why would it be Italian? Of course, it's because Tommy decided to do that. But every, almost every single thing with languages starts with English, then something like French, Spanish, German. Italian would not be the top. Well, definitely not the second. It just seems like just another, I don't know what the word is, dumb idea that he has. So number nine is probably the biggest issue I have in this whole video that he shows. It's the purchase process when you purchase the game. So when he shows the featured games, and already it's weird because Finnegan Fox is already highlighted, so it makes it look like you already own it, but you don't. So you click on it, you click to purchase. It already has some, if you have your credit cards stored on the machine already, you just pick the whatever credit card you want, click next, and by default, it already has the, um, the check mark checked off when you're purchasing the game and that doesn't seem right. I've never seen anything, you know, by checking all these, checking off this box, you accept all terms. I've never seen by default a thing checked off. So I think that's, I'm not even sure if that's legal, but it just seems off. And you would think, especially since Tommy made mention in his investors pitch about how that one kid on the mobile game, I forget which game spent $10,000 and how, you know, non-secure it was giving a kid your phone in his demo video here it's just the same thing it's not that there's ten thousand dollars worth of games you could buy but there's nothing stopping a kid from buying all the games it just seems like really that doesn't seem right and you see after he launches the game which does take a little while to load it's not as instant as tommy makes it out to being you see it says press a button I, do, I wasn't aware that there was an A button for the Amico controller. So that's that might be in line with what the magazine review uh, that I posted the other day said where the menu systems are confusing because as far as I know it, there is no actual A or B button on the remote. Or is this a port for the Xbox version? Who knows? And the last one, the 10th item, was just a layout of the main screen. I just find it very clunky in my opinion i would have probably just had you know your library of games the store settings and power and nothing else instead they have everything on the the main screen and below your games they have all the different genre like where you can filter to different subgenres, so like action or family and they have one that's called grandparents but they skip through that really quick i don't know why but to me it just seems really messy and It'll be very cluttered if they ever do release a lot of games. It'll be pressing down and down, and it'll just be a ton of games. And it'll just be, you know, it's hard to see. I would think what it should do instead is use the controller to, you know, filter the games. There should be buttons. So you press, you know, action games on the controller, and then it'll show only the action games, family games. And that would make more sense to me, but that's just my opinion. Overall, I don't know why this took them a year to show off. I think this is the exact same user interface they showed like nine months ago. It's not a big deal. It's nothing special. It's kind of messy. It's pretty much on par with what we expect already. In the end, I don't think it does its job because this is supposed to be aimed for casual gamers and people who use mobile phones. This seems really clunky and not really intuitive. So I can't see little kids or seniors or casual gamers really understanding it well. And all the time they put into it, it doesn't really show a lot. So that's just my two cents, and that's all I have for today, so have a good one.